I'd like to say before I start, I'm not in a very good mood. I've had a hell of a day. My missus have had a coil fitted. And she's picking up a CB operator's on the bloody thing. And I'm getting verbal both ends, where I am. Well, one end is shouting, go to work, I got a headache. And the other end is shouting, come on in, rubber duck. <laughs> Mom, we don't get on so good. We don't have sex at all now, not on religious grounds. On religious grounds, we don't have sex now on religious grounds. <laughs> That is, I'm Jewish and she's a pig. <laughs> but uh, I was giving her a portion about 12 months ago. I was giving her a portion. She said, you're taking a long time. I said, I can't think of anybody. <laughs> But last night, I was up in Birmingham, I was up with my mate, I got a mate called Denzel Pemberthy, I oh, yeah. <laughs> And we went for some of that Indian food, the bloody stuff, Alex. <laughs> don't you go eating that bloody stuff, that bloody stuff. That Vindaloo, don't eat that bloody stuff. The bloody stuff. <laughs> it's not only hot when you eat the bloody stuff, is it? <laughs> This morning, my ass went down for a drink. <laughs> if, if you if you eat that bloody stuff, you put a toilet roll in the fridge before you go to bed. <laughs> And we got in Bobman this morning. We was in Bobman this morning. We was in Bobman this morning. In Bobman. This morning in Bobman we were. The dental said, Jeffrey, he said, I'm going to shit myself. I said, that's that bloody Vindaloo, the bloody stuff. I said, I said, is the toilet going there? See, well, what happened was, see, what happened was, he dropped his trousers just like he would, see. He dropped, I was telling these people here, I was up in Birmingham last night with Denver and that Indian food, don't you go eating that bloody stuff. Isn't it a shame when cousins marry like that? Well, see, now what happened was, see, what happened was, he, he dropped his trousers, he dropped his trousers, see, and he reversed right in. <laughs> see, and he, no, he'd already started, see, he'd already started, see. See, he'd already started, see. But when he looked down, there was four feet. And, he, and he'd already started, see, he'd already started, see. And he'd already started, see. And there was four feet and he'd already started. He said, I'm very sorry, mate. He said, I didn't realize you was there. Well, Lucky said, I saw you coming and I pulled up your trousers before you started.
But I, I come from a little place called right down in West Cornwall, a little place called St. Just. I come from right down in West Cornwall. I was one of four boys, I was. I was one of four boys, I was. I was the youngest one, I was. I still am. <laughs> And we, we never had any new clothes, not when I was a boy. Father used to buy all our clothes second hand. He used to buy a lot of our clothes from the Army, Navy, surplus stores. That's pay attention, you twat. <laughs> I'd watch you if you was performing. <laughs> we all would. So get yourself ready, you're all in the second half. <laughs> now, you used to buy a lot of our clothes from the Army Navy surplus stores. That's where you used to get our clothes from the Army Navy surplus stores. That's where you used to get our clothes. <laughs> and you can't imagine the embarrassment for me when I was 14, going to school dressed as a Japanese admiral. <laughs> with high heel shoes on. <laughs> but it's... It is a very sad day for me today. Because in fact, it is the anniversary today of the death of my uncle, who lost his life tragically in the Battle of the Little Bighorn. And he won actually in the battle, he won in the battle He's camping in the next field. <laughs> oh, he went over to complain about the noise and some bastard shot him. <laughs> See the tits on you? Look at the tits on you! <laughs> My missus used to have big tits, but the kids had them. <laughs> Well, she's still got big ones, but they flop down like yours out there now. <laughs> I tell you, last night I was in Plymouth, and there's a girl outside the chip shop with her knickers around her ankles eating chips. <laughs> I said, what, what are you doing here with your knickers around your ankles eating chips? Oh, Christ, she said, has he gone? <laughs> But I, I was in Callington this morning, anybody from Callington? And I said, why is it all the boys in Callington is wearing kilts? He said, the sheep have got used to the sound of the zips. <laughs> yeah. I took my, I took my missus to a disco in Newcastle. You haven't seen my missus, she play horrible she is. <laughs> I know anybody can be ugly, but she views the privilege. She play hard. <laughs> I brought her with me tonight, safe kissing her goodbye, say. <laughs> anybody want a picture of her put over the mantelpiece, you're welcome. You'll keep your children away from the fire, anyway. <laughs> But I took her, I took her to a disco and she got the worst zits. You've never seen such bloody spots as she got. And I took her to a disco in Newquay with all these bloody spots. And I said to the man, how much is it to go in? He said, it's two pound a head. <laughs> Cost me 4,000 pounds to get her in. When I got in there, Pemberthy, he's already in there, Pemberthy is. He's chatting up a lesbian, he is. There's 300 women and he's chatting up a lesbian. She said, Denzel, go and talk to one of the other girls because I'm a lesbian. He said, which part of lesbiania are you from? <laughs> No, she said, you tosser. 
said, I'm a lesbian. She said, you see that girl with the miniskirt? She said, I'd like to pull her knickers off and kiss her bum. <laughs> Christ, Ezra said, I'm a lesbian as well. <laughs> But I, I got dancing with a colored girl. I was doing bloody good. I was dancing with a colored girl, doing bloody good I was. I never danced with a colored girl, but I was doing bloody good. She said, are you going to take me home? I said, I'm not going to Africa tonight. It's quarter past two. She said, have you ever been drunk enough to kiss a girl on the stomach? Now I said, I've been drunker than that. <laughs> but she was the blackest girl ever I've been off with. I, I got her in the car to take her home. And she farted and filled the place with soot. <laughs> And I, I got her down to Lifton and I was giving her portion up against the spa shop in Lifton. <laughs> she said, you're not doing a very good job. I said, well, I do it my best. <laughs> but I haven't done this for two years. I've been away in the VD hospital. That's where I've been, see? In the VD hospital, that's where I've been, see? Oh, she said, what's the food like? She said, I'm going in tomorrow. Oh. <laughs> But later on in the second half, we should be asking a lot of questions. We should be asking, what's the similarity between an ostrich and a vat man? They could both stick their bills up their ass. <laughs> we should be also asking, what's the difference between a bogey out of your nose and a Brussels sprout? You can't get the children to eat the Brussels sprout. <laughs> we should be hearing in the second half a sad tale of when Pemberthy had a job on a sheep station in Australia. All he's seen for six months was bloody sheep. He's miles out in the outback, he never seen bloody soul. Then he had a message on his radio. He said, Denzel is your neighbor here. He said, where you live? <laughs> he said, I live 200 miles up the road. Christ. He said, I'm your closest neighbor. Denzel said, I am spoke nobody for six months. He said, look, Saturday night, we're having a big do. Come on over. He said, what sort of a do is it? Well, he said, it's a barbecue. He said, it's a hell of a night. He said, we shall have some steaks and beef burgers. Then he said, there'll be harmony singing around the fire, a lot of drinking, a lot of shagging going on, and more drinking and shagging. Hell of a night. It's hell of a night. You must come. Then, well, what do you think I ought to wear? He said, wear what you like. He said, it's just the two of us. Four months ago, Pemberthy started a job with Lords and Levin, then Penzance, on the estate as a handyman gardener. And he said, then for the first job, go out to the front of the manor house, he said, and Chris out the porch. Two hours, he's back, he said, I've Chris out of the porch, inside and out. And he said, it's not a porch, it's a Ferrari. <laughs> Mind you, he, he had trouble with his missus. She won bigger tits. She do. She won bigger tits. Silicone tits. Silicone tits. She won. He said, "You don't want to waste your money on silicone tits. Take a bit of paper and rub up between them." 
She said, well, that'd make him bigger. He said, it's done a bloody good job your ass in the last 20 years. <laughs> but when he, when he left school, he went to work in Trelisk Hospital when he left school first. And his mother went down to see how he's doing, and the doctor said Denzel's a very good boy. He's a good boy. He is a good boy. <laughs> but he gets things mixed up bad, see. I told him to give a woman two tablets at six o'clock, and he give her six tablets at two o'clock. <laughs> then I told him to give a man one injection at eleven o'clock, and he got that wrong. He gave him eleven injections at one o'clock. See, get things mixed up. That's the only problem. He gets things mixed up. He said, I'm a bit concerned at the moment. He said, I just sent him down the men's ward to prick a man's boil. <laughs> but what we're going to do... We're going to have a short break now. In the, in the break, we're going to run a little raffle. Tonight in the, in the break, and have somebody will come amongst you and you can come amongst yourselves. <laughs> in the gents' toilet, there will be a game of brag. <laughs> and this boy is all the way from Plymouth. Where are you from, boss? That's hell of a hooter you got on you there. <laughs> Of course, I should put wing mirrors on that bloody thing. <laughs> Will you pick his nose, mate? You're closer than he is. Mind that bastard, don't peck you to death. Then. <laughs> in the second half, we've got a young girl from Tregadilla that's going to stand on her head and fart her boots off. <laughs> We're going to have a little break. We're going to have a raffle, a game of bag, fill your glasses, have a walk around, cool off. We'll see you in the second half. Don't go away. It's music and it's over the pool. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Pete Carson. Mr. Pete Carson. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Pete, he's a good looking bastard, isn't he? I ain't that good looking bastard, I do. Man, I say what, I've had a hell of a day there. I've been in to see my bank manager, the bastard. I said, I'd like to open the joint account. He says, who is this? It's you, you wanker. <laughs> then a man knocked my door this afternoon. Jeffro, he said, you haven't paid for your double glazing. I said, you told me in 12 months he'd pay for himself. <laughs> But last week, we had a video film last week. You never seen nothing like it. You never seen nothing like it. You never, honest, you never seen nothing like it. That's a very hairy chest you've got there, mother. <laughs> no, it's in your cleavage is deeper than I thought. I'm looking. <laughs> Why you got blonde hair and a ginger fanny? Why is that? <laughs> Boys, come and have a look at this. You've never seen nothing like it. You've never seen nothing like it. No. We have this, <laughs> we have this video film. You never see nothing like it. You never, you must have worth a lot of money, mate. You don't waste any on your clothes, not you. <laughs> you never see nothing like this video film. It's called Zulu. Have you seen that bloody film? <laughs> you won't believe what I'm going to tell you. It's called Zulu. You won't believe it. <laughs> There's millions of Zulus, and every one of the buggers was black. <laughs> every one of the buggers was black, and they had bloody great sharp spears and battlers, and they throw them at our boys, and they didn't give a toss where they went. They could have gone on anybody's ass or anything, they didn't give a toss. These black bastards just throwing these spears. 
they weren't even bloody looking with his fine bastard. And all our boys had to defend themselves was machine guns. <laughs> one of them had a blowpipe, for Christ's sake. <laughs> How one sided can you piss and well get? And then, and what happened then, I, I couldn't believe it. I still don't believe what I saw. In the middle of all this, I up got a boy from Wales and started to sing to the buggers. <laughs> and he's singing to the Zulus, and they're throwing spears trying to shut the bugger up. <laughs> and, and if, if I had a spear, I'd have shut the bastard up as well. <laughs> But he was singing to the Zulus and they're throwing spears. You never think. We'll keep a west. You bastard! <laughs> Look what you're doing, you wanker! In the hillside, we'll keep <laughs> a welcome in the veil. We'll kiss a There's about 30 dead, and this asshole is still singing. <laughs> Each hour of tears when you come. <laughs> they said, Taffy, for Christ's sake, sing something they know. <laughs> We've had a hell of a day here. Denzel from birthday opened the baton for Lou Dell, and somebody balled up a bit quick and he turned his back and the ball went right up his arm. <laughs> and we got him in Lanson Hospital and this time he's crying, she's crying. <laughs> the doctor said, what happened? I said, well, he's playing cricket up Lou Dell, and he said, I said, he balled up quick and Denzel took his eye off. He turned his back and the cricket ball's gone right up his heart. <laughs> Christ, he said, how's that? I said, don't you piss him well, sir. But see, what happened, see, he'd been out in the sun, he'd been sunbed and he's burnt up, he's looking bloody good. And he got here to strip off everything burnt except his cock, see. I thought, well, how can we burn he? Well, we tried it with a blow lamp, but he kept crying, see. <clears throat> I said, what we'll do, we get down, Nuki, early in the morning, dig a pit in the sand, put you in, give you a little piece of alkazine pipe to breathe through, <laughs> and leave his cock stick out the sand, see? <laughs> I thought three or four hours he'd be burnt up like a nut, wouldn't he? Be... <laughs> I sat on the rock, I said, I'll dig you out about six o'clock. Well, I could see him down there burning. I thought he's looking good. <laughs> and about half past two in the afternoon, I went down with a stick and turned him over. <laughs> see, but what we didn't realize, see, it was Campbell and Redruth Women's Institute annual outing. <laughs> Annual out into the beach, with Cameron and Redruth Women's Institute, say. And about three o'clock, two women come on with a stick each walking. Mavis, she said, whatever's that?
Dorothy, she said, I can't believe that. She said, I got married for one of them. She said, and you, they are growing wild. Bloody good job she's never picking one. But see, we laugh at Denzel, we shouldn't laugh at Denzel. He was unwanted, he wasn't wanted as a child. His mother was still trying to get an abortion after he started school. Then she, she was that long in labor, they had to shave her twice. And we got in school, and when we was in school, the girl said, please, miss, I'm not leave the room and bust him for a pill. She said, that's number one. She was that confused, Denzel, because he won good on figures, see. <laughs> then the boy said, please, miss, I won the shot. <laughs> she said, that's number two. Christ, Denzel said, I'm going to have to get a calculator. <laughs> And Denzel put his hand up, please, Mrs. He said, I wouldn't have fart and I don't know the number. <laughs> but I've been in to see my uncle, he's in the hospital, he's in very well, he got a rare, very rare throat infection, and he can't swallow, and everything he eats, he got up stuffed up his ass. <laughs> And he particularly liked square crisps. <laughs> and he, he said to the sister, he said, do you think I can have a cup of tea? Certainly, she said, turn over. <laughs> right. And they stick a piece of alkazine pipe up his ass and the funnel and the blessed great mug of tea and started pouring, Christ, hell, <laughs> hell. He said, you laugh us up. She said, is it too hot? <laughs> no, he said, you haven't got any plenty of sugar in it. <laughs> then I said, I said to a man in another bed, I said, what's the matter with you? <laughs> He said, I got stomach ulcers. He said, all I'm allowed to eat is milk and junk and rice pudding because I got stomach ulcers and that's all I'm allowed to eat is milk and junk and rice pudding because I got stomach ulcers and that's all I'm allowed to eat is milk and junk and rice pudding. And he said, that's all they give me to eat because I got stomach ulcers and, and that's why I'm here eating milk and junk and rice pudding because I got stomach ulcers. That's why I'm here. I said, you got stomach ulcers, you have or no? He said, how do you know that? He said, so you eat and junk it when I come in. He said, everybody in this hospital is on a diet. He said, you see that room is out no entry. I said, yes, he said, you're not allowed in there. He said, there's a man in there with AIDS. Hell. I said, if he got AIDS, yes. He said, he got AIDS and he's in there and he's got AIDS and he's in there. I said, is he on the diet as well? Oh, yes. He said, he's on the diet. He said, he's on kippers and fritters and rye vita. He said, that's all they can get underneath the door. <laughs> I always remember when I was 16, for Christmas, when I was 16, father gave me a new shotgun. I always wanted a shotgun, I did. And Christmas day, I thought, after I had my dinner, I'll walk down through the woods. If I see someone in the fire at, proper, but if I don't, I'll go down to the pub and have a drink and come on home again, see. 
Well, I picked up a dog and the gun, and I hadn't gone more than half a mile before I went the rabbit. First shot, I shot the fucker. Bang! And I got my knife out of the gut, and shit, did these stink. And I was pulling guts. You don't want to see a lot of that after Christmas pudding. Do <laughs> then I looked up, and I seen the vicar coming. Right. I thought, if he catch me shooting Christmas Day, he'll give me hell, that bugger will. So I reversed right in the bushes, exactly as I was, gun, <coughs> rabbit, guts, a lot. <laughs> I thought, then when he's gone on, I'll go out and go on behind him, see. <clears throat> well, I think what happened was... <laughs> What had happened was, the vicar had ate too much dinner. Exactly as he got opposite me, he dropped his trousers and he pulled his cloak right up over his head and he reversed right into where I was soon. <laughs> and he was curling it up just like a walnut whip. You will never see him. If only I had a hazelnut. <laughs> He's like Mr. Softy, like they do the ice cream. You know? I thought, when he finished, he's going to turn around and see what he's done for certain sure. <laughs> then I'm going to look some bloody stupid here. I thought, I'll find you, you fucker. <laughs> And I took this handful of guts. <laughs> and just, and just dropped out underneath that. <laughs> you think he does that. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I sneaked off and went up to the pub and dropped my gun in the porch. I said, I'll have two whiskeys, please, Jack. He said, who's? With you? I thought the vicar would be here in just a few minutes. <laughs> he said, the vicar been in the parish 14 years. He never been here before. I said, he'll be here in just a few moments. <laughs> well, I'm honest and honest. I wish then I'd never done it. Because the vicar come in and he's white as sheep. And you could tell he was in a hurry by the way he had his fly front buttoned up to his waistcoat. <laughs> and he just started drinking everybody's drink. Jack said, Reverend, you don't look well. He said, I'm not well. He said, I was walking my dinner off through the woods and he said, I went in the bushes to relieve myself. He went in for shit because I seen him. <laughs> He said, I had the most terrible accident, Jack. He said, I passed part of my test side. <laughs> Lucky he said, I had my walking stick. I've managed now to get most of it back. <laughs> I got a new girlfriend now. Let's have a drop more of your drink, that's plenty good. That's plenty good, that is. Now you can tell your friends you shared a glass to the man that shared a glass with Rock Hudson. <laughs> I got a new girlfriend now, and you know when you got a new girlfriend, you try to be on your best behavior, don't you? I took her out in the jingle, in the pony and jingle, first time out, and you don't know what to say, do you? don't know what to say. And we was going on for miles, and I thought, well, I didn't know what to say, I didn't. And then the horse lifted up his tail and fought Heather. 
A long fly that would be as big as a Malteser. I never felt embarrassed in my life. My dear, I said, I don't know what to say. I've never been more embarrassed. All I can do is apologize. She said, well, don't worry, because I thought the horse done it anyway. <laughs> but you know, when, when you take her out and you're trying to be on your best behavior and I'm walking out talking about sensible things, she said, oh, Jeffro, look at that bull up in that field shagging that cow. <laughs> right. 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 Oh, so my word, I never noticed that sort of thing. She said, how did that bull know when it's time of the year to do that sort of thing? I said, I don't know. I'm not an authority on that sort of thing. I'm more for gardening than that sort of thing. I am. <laughs> I said, I think it's something to do with nature. I think she gives off a smell, and when, when she's smelling right, he gives her a portion. I think that's how it happens. When she said, it's all done with smell, I think, yeah, it's smell, and then he gives, I think it's nature and smell. I think I understand. But I'll ask somebody. And we got out, outside the pub, and there's two dogs. Oh, she's a look more shaggy. Oh, my God. She said, how does that dog know when it's time to do that? Right. I said, well, is this nature business? She gave off a smell, and he smell, and he slips her portion. <laughs> so I understand. She said, well, I think that nature is marvelous. And I got home and kissed her goodnight. I said, when shall I see you again? She said, when your bloody cold get better. <laughs> But I've had a very disturbing story. My auntie, she's out abroad working as a missionary, my auntie is. And she got stranded in the desert with two, two nuns in the desert. She's a good woman, she's a good woman. She's a good woman, she is. And she's out there starving, she's bloody starving. And these two girls are starving. One of them said, listen, she said, I am pissed for a week. She told me that, she'd come from her <laughs> She said, I'm bloody starving. She said, I'm not hungry. My ass is snapping out. The cactus is here. <laughs> well, then they said, I got a little bag of flour I've saved. They said, there for a fortnight. She said, we'll bake a loaf of bread. If we can only get a little drop of moisture to big, mix up a bit of dough. She said, perhaps we're going to dig a little pit in the sand and put the flour in. One of us could pass a little drop of water, perhaps in the sand, see, in the flower. But she said, I am pissed for a week. She said, well, we only want a skeet. But they dig a pit and put the flower in. She said, Marguerite, could you pass a little drop of moisture? But they got her dress right up over her head. And they lined her up best they could. Right, I said, leave her go. <laughs> nothing, not a dew drop, nothing. She said, well, force yourself, Marguerite, force yourself. Have a, have a. She even tried with one leg in the air like that. Have a. She said, well, Marguerite, there's no water left in you. She said, Suzanne, perhaps you could pass a little skeet. But she said, I am pissed for a week either. Well, she said, we try. Well, see, they lined Suzanne up and she forced herself. She went blue in the face, she did. And the veins in her neck took out like that microphone wire. Have She said, there's nothing coming through. Well, she said, I can't understand it. They've left here. Well, she said, you two girls have dried right out. I shall have to pass a little drop of water. Well, see, my auntie's a great big woman, see. And they got her dress right up over her head and they lined her up. 
but they couldn't tell to a foot where it's going to come from. <laughs> so they made the pit a bit bigger to catch the splashes. <laughs> well, see, my auntie, she knew that mother to a dry dry there. She knew that. She, she was last resort, she had to do something and give the girl credit, all you can do is, is take her hat off to her, that's what we would do. She forced herself that much, poor old soul. She fart. And she blowed all the flour right out of the hole. Another two pisses of lava. <laughs> but you know, we was having a lot earlier on, we was all upstairs, Pete Carson, Penn and Graham, Bourbon Jam. We were saying, what a, what a crazy thing we do for a living. And for 18 years, I've entertained the public, and I love people, and I think we all do. And we all need the company of other people, and in my business we see a lot of people. But no matter how much you enjoy the company of other people, everybody, no matter what you do, whether you're a comic, a carpenter, a taxi driver, no matter what you do, everybody needs the solitude of just being on your own for those few precious moments. And last Sunday night, I got back to Cornwall, and I'd been in the theatre working, and I thought what a joy it was at half past four in the morning just to be alone. To have no one to influence my thoughts at all was just a complete joy. It was the most beautiful, clear night I think I've probably ever seen in all my life. And I sat alone, I looked, that was a million stars in the sky. Just like somebody sprinkled silver on the black velvet. And I sat alone and admired this magnitude. And I thought to myself, just for a fleeting moment in eternity, as I sat alone looking up, I thought to myself, what has happened to the roof of my shit house? <laughs> <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to say what a wonderful, wonderful night I've had. Not tonight, another night. <laughs> and I'd like to say what a lovely crowd you've been, but I can't bring myself to do that. And you know when you go to these shows, and you, and you, especially in the theatres, you go and do an hour on stage, and then you say, good night, God bless, and then you walk behind them curtains, everybody clap and cheer and shout for more, then you come on and do some more. That's all bullshit. <laughs> That's the biggest heap of bullshit ever. Because I was over painting Festival Theatre three weeks ago, and I said, good night, God bless, and went behind them curtains. When I got back out, everybody pissed off <laughs> Thanks for being a great crowd. You have been a super crowd. And I would like to leave you a little thought. Treat every day of your life like it is your last day on earth. And one day you'll be bloody right. <laughs> Good night, God bless you. Wonderful. <laughs>